Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. I see you this morning. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Hi, Jill. Good morning, Crystal Powell. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Hi, Washington. All right, Joe, let's have a good talk this morning. Grab your coffee. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning from Calgary. All right, everybody. We're going to have a conversation this morning because I promise you uh, this morning uh, there are teachers and parents sitting in their cars trying to find the courage to step into uh, another day. And um, what we're going to talk about today is a, um, a school shooting that uh, occurred yesterday in a little town in Texas. Um, just west of San Antonio. And in the moment, uh, 19 babies have died, as has um, three adults and the shooter. So everything we're going to talk about this morning, uh, if you're new here, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I'm coming to you from Treaty 7 land, which is home of the Blackfoot Confederacy, which is made up of the Siksika, the Kainai, the Pikani, the Tatina First Nation, and the Stony Nakota First Nation, the Métis Nation Region 3. Uh, I'm a psychologist uh, by training, and I um, talk a lot about trauma. I've written a book uh, called Kids These Days and another one called Teachers These Days. And for a long time, we've been talking about the mental health crisis that is on our hands. And there is today, uh, when we think about the context of somebody, uh, many people, this has happened for a number of times and we keep talking about um, the response to it, right? So the Sandy Hook, I will, multiple times. I mean, Columbine was the first time that in this world of um, school shooters, uh, school shootings, that people thought, oh my goodness, what is happening? So here's a couple of things. We're going to talk a little bit about this from a trauma perspective and then what I think we should do to hang on to today. Okay. So three things are going to happen. We'll talk a little bit about from a trauma perspective, why I think it is. And then at the end, I want to give you a couple of things I want you to think about today. Okay, so uh, all these opinions are just mine. So you're here on this platform. That is mine. It's my opinion only. This isn't therapy, but I am a psychologist. And so this is my opinion from that perspective. Okay. If you can, in any situation, identify more specifically with something big that has happened in the world, it may affect your heart. It will send you into a place that get, puts you in a heightened state of arousal. Okay, so this morning, if you are a teacher or a parent, if you've ever been involved in a school lockdown, if you um, are in Texas, the closer you are to a place where there has been a crisis, a heightened state of arousal, expect this, your body will be heavy. If you're going to drop off your babies this morning at a school, if you're going to step into a school as a teacher, I promise you, whether even you're consciously thinking about it, your body will keep the score. Okay. So first of all, we need to hold space for that. Big deep breath with me. And drop your shoulders. Okay. If it's hard for you today, I expect it. That's not normal because none of this shit is normal but it's expected. So give yourself some space for that, okay? The other thing that happens in institutions in, historically when there's big emotions is we wanna fix it. So we may try to do things like avoid it. Let's not talk about it, it's good. We're in Canada, everything's fine. We're far away from Texas, it's gonna be okay. It will never happen here. Don't worry mm -hmm. about it. You're good. That's a mistake. Okay? It's an effort to try to regulate emotion because when people are 
heightened, we want to fix it. We're going to come out of the gate today with a lot of things. This is what needs to fucking happen. Here's gun gun control. This is the problem. This is the thing. This is the thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably we're not going to be wrong about a lot of those things, but here's the issue right now. You can't address what you don't acknowledge. So if your grade fours want to talk about it today, absolutely you do. This is the issue. When we don't address it, it eats us from the inside out, okay? It's not about um, anxiety, depression, PTSD, will that kill you? No, not talking about it might. So here's the issue, is that we want to fix things when everything's big and emotionally disconnected. Here's all the answers. We'll be called to action today and we need action. Here's the step that we miss. Simply holding space and acknowledging it. If you have the potential to see the kids you teach, the kids you're going to drop off at school today, your best friend's kids, the kids you coach, that's really critically important today, get the eyes of your teachers, your principals, dropping our shoulders and being in the state of regulation will help us one step at a time to navigate it. Don't assume that people, because they're not talking about it, aren't thinking about it, particularly kids. Okay. We often are concerned if, if we just don't talk about it, obviously nobody's concerned about it, right? We do this all this the time in death, um, COVID, anything big where we know there's a heightened state of the war in Ukraine. We assume that people just won't talk about it. They will. They will hear about it. And if they don't, you're not going to create a trauma by talking about it. How you talk about it is much more important about whether you do or not. Okay. How you make somebody feel safe to the best of your ability, because you're not a fucking magician, is you cannot tell them, but you have to show them. I will tell you that again. This is not new, Deb. You're right. April 28th, 1999 in Tabor. The vast majority of school shootings in the world happen in the United States of America. Okay. The vast majority. The answer often is in this place. We can't walk somebody home if we're dysregulated first. That's the number one. This isn't the job of little people to figure this out. This is the job of big people to, to walk them home, okay? So when you step into your staff rooms today, when you step into um, your offices today or your parent council meetings, you look at each other first. The job is how you leave your home this morning the best that you can, look into the eyes of your children, then you step into your staff. Then and only then are you in a place to be able to serve, okay? When you look at each other, it's okay. Together, we were never meant to do any of this alone, okay? Number two, let's put this into context. In a heightened state of arousal, this is a horrific incident on the backs of two and a half years of a COVID conversation. Uncertainty, fear, and no end in sight makes us the most dysregulated we've ever been. War. In the Ukraine, or in Ukraine, we see this every day, multiple long overdue conversations around systemic oppression. Okay. We are in this process where this should be particularly heavy today. Okay. Here's the thing that I want you to think about. Instead of answering questions with all of the answers, because it's going to feel like we need them today, tell me more. What's the hardest part? What are you worried about the most? Those questions matter more than providing the answers right now, okay? Particularly when we're navigating big emotions of little people, okay? Navigating big emotions in this place, okay? The most dysregulated among us experience things like uncertainty, fear, and no end in sight, okay? That is the ingredients of a global pandemic where we've all been for over two years as a globe, okay? When we are in a heightened state of arousal, we're going to come out swinging. And I understand it. I get it. I completely understand how we're here. Any possibility you have today to drop your shoulders, this is the point. If you're not okay, the people we love and we lead aren't going to be okay. Okay? Secondly, that's how a trauma response works. Okay? In the middle of this process, um, and Carrie, I love this why in this season you have to be the adult. Listen, I hear you. 
I wish this wasn't our job, but it is. Today, and I gotta tell you, every day right now, it's not about literacy and numeracy. It's not about behavioral interventions. It's really about how we hang on to each other. I promise you this, no senior policy, no senior leader is gonna fix it. It is up to you and me to do the next best ride kind of thing. That's it. You give me anything you got today and it is more than enough, I promise you. What, I wrote about this in Kids These Days and I will say this again right now. Although access to firearms is a fucking problem, it is not the issue. We are facing a mental health crisis. Never in the history of the free world have we been more disconnected than we are right now. And if you are not seen, you will turn it up until you are, period. If you control all of the things in the world, we understand this with addicts, we understand this with kids who have, with anybody who has a significant mental health related concern and are dysregulated and are not seen. When you continue to be unseen, you will turn it up until you are. If I control all your access to a certain weapon, whatever that is, you will find a car or a bomb or a something to get noticed. Okay, so should gun control be a, co a conversation? Absolutely. I don't want you to miss the point. All the responses to this, fucking drills, metal detectors, arming teachers, not the fucking solution, period. How did we get here is the question. In just two generations, we have done a massive shift in this world of proximity to each other and disconnection. We are wired for connection. We were never meant to do any of this alone. You cannot walk through this world in a heightened state of arousal and not have somebody do this. Okay, okay, look at me, look at me, look at me. Okay, okay, okay. We were never meant to do any of this alone. And we are still operating in a world where the best practices that were established for two years ago, I mean, for two generations ago, we no longer live in that world. Those best practices no longer exist in the world we live in today. Behavioral interventions, punishing the people who make the bad fucking choices, thinking they're gonna turn around and be kind, punishing, extricating, isolating, removing from, does not address the problem looking and seeing. Does that mean you condone, support, or believe violence? Fuck no. No. It means that every single school shooter, every single person who struggles significantly to regulate emotion has a reason for being dysregulated. The issue is the more scared we become, the more disconnected we'll be we become and the more dismissive we are, the more divisive we are, us versus them. They're the fucking problems. It's the guns. We are not looking. It's the bad guys. It's this color. It's that color. Zip it. The, the, the exact thing that this particularly trauma incites is disconnect. And it is the thing that we must fight today. Looking and seeing is the only way home, I promise you. And what that means today for you and me is that a senior leader, we need action, hear me when I say this, but there is no single fucking policy on this planet that is going to be as powerful as what you and me can do today. Two things, look at the eyes of your babies before you leave today. In the school drop-off line, I want you to wave. I want you to get out of your vehicles and say good morning to the teachers. I want you to walk into places today and look at your best friend's kids, the kids you coach. I want you to notice the eyes and the hoodies and the hair and the piercings. And I don't want you to punish anybody for anything. I want you to seek first to understand before being understood. Looking and seeing is the only way home. Your only job and mine is to do the next best right kind thing 
today in our communities. That is how we take every action to prevent it. I promise you. When our kids have questions about it today and we hold space for it, we give them a language to do the thing they need to do, which is to talk about it, to have an emotional space. You can't tell kids how to be empathic and anti-racist and kind. You have to show them. You can't tell them how to process their emotion and that to deal with big things, you have to be all in. You have to show them. Huh? Avoiding it. It's okay. We're fine. It's okay. We're good. We're good. We're in Canada. It's going to be fine. Teachers are going to be fine. Let's go. Come on. We can do it. Let's go. Let's get back in. Big fucking mistake. So to my friends this morning in the United States of America, to those close to Texas, to my Barbara Gruners of the world who have held kids in that beautiful state for decades, to every mama and dad and auntie and uncle and cookum and grandma and grandpa that are worried about your babies this morning, I see you because I'm worried about mine too. The answer, as much as we're able, is a two-step process. First, drop your shoulders, wiggle your toes, and take a deep breath. We have everything in this moment that we need to handle big emotion. I promise you. I promise you this is not an insurmountable issue. It is one that will require a massive reconnection revolution and undertaking by you and me today, starting in this moment, to do the next best right kind thing. And I will be here every Wednesday to remind you of that. And I hope when I forget it, not if, you will be there to remind me and my children that that is what we need to do. So if you are so beautifully in charge of somebody's babies today, if you have your babies today, you do holy work. Because your job is only to look at them, to walk them home, one sweet step at a time. This is all so much fucking bigger than us. Yeah? And what is so critically important, right, is the people who are not seen will turn it up. Every single person who has committed um, an act of atrocity, including every single school shooter, has had a massive trauma history, and they were not seen. I promise you, there is no exception to that statement. Once again, it does not condone, but none of these babies are surprises. Not one time, not one time, including this human who posted about guns last week, who knew, listen, shot his grandmother. This is not about bad people. I've assessed and treated over a thousand kids in this country and I have never, not one time, met a bad kid. Not one time. I have met a lot of emotionally dysregulated kids. And I have met a lot of kids who think their pieces are shit and not worth it and that nobody matters, that they, that they don't matter. That's the issue we're facing. It is a mental health crisis of disconnection. I promise you. So this is not a teacher's job today. This is not a bus driver's job today. This is not a superintendent's job today, even a premier or prime minister or a president. This is you and me. Next best right kind thing. Looking into the people who, of the eyes of the people who we are way more alike than we are different. We all started with this feeling. The heartbeat of our moms. Bum, 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 bum. That is where we are most regulated, and that is where we need to come home to every time we get overwhelmed or dysregulated or feel like this world is unfucking fair, and it is. Everybody who's walking on this planet felt this thing first. Bum, 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 bum. And it is the thing we need to get back to. When there are worst places, what we need is this. Not people to tell us what to fucking do, but to show us. Okay, okay. The physical proximity of each other. 
Come here. Okay, 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 okay. So the call to action today for you and me is to get out of our vehicles at drop off, to look into the eyes of those holy workers called teachers that don't get paid enough. The biggest issue between teachers in the US and teachers in Canada, although we do a shitty job of in Canada, looking after our educators, we do a worse job in the United States of America. That is the defining feature, I think. That's my opinion only. But when the big people are okay, the little people stand a much better chance. And right now, we're going to want to pour resources into the little people and gun control. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The big people aren't okay. Those of us doing the walking home aren't okay. Nobody stands a chance. Okay? Next best right kind thing today. Drop your shoulders. I am so grateful you're here. Do not underestimate your power today. All we need is you. You look at my babies, I'll look at yours. You look at my babies, I'll look at yours. That's it. Okay? The weight of the world is heavy today. And we need each other. That's it. So don't look away. We just need to be seen. So many kids need to be seen today. So many teachers need to be seen today. We're not failing these babies. They just need more of us. And everything you got today is more than enough. You do not need any more training. You do not need any more specialties. We don't need any more fucking, we need each other. And we're way more alike than we are different. Okay? <sighs> Drop your shoulders and go in with your whole heart today. That's it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go find babies who are just like yours in this little town of mine and give them the best I got today, okay? That's all we need. I will see you back here Friday if you're free, okay? Take care of each other. It's all we need.